Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews and another Hammer Productions Night. Tonight I will be reviewing Lust for a Vampire, released in 1971. Lust for a Vampire stars Michael Johnson, Ute Stensgard, Ralph Bates, Barbara Jefford, Susanna Lee, Helen Christie, Mike Raven, Harvey Hall, Michael Brennan, Pepa Steele, Judy Matheson, and David Healy. Lust for a Vampire was directed by Jimmy Sangster. Once again, the screenplay for this one was written by Tudor Gates, who had written the previous film in the Karnstein series, The Vampire Lovers, in 1970. Now, this was uh, one of the very few films that uh, Jimmy Sangster directed himself. Normally, he was more the writer of some of these films, and he's a great writer. But in this one, he was uh, stepping in to fill the void when... Terence Fisher um, was in an automobile accident and wasn't able to direct this film like they like Hammer planned for him to do. Um, so yeah, he's he was put on the spot here doing this film, and I I don't think he does that good, bad of a job here directing this one. He does fairly well in this thing. Michael Johnson gives an okay performance as Richard Lestrange in this one. Ute Stensgard as Mercalla slash Carmilla isn't quite as good as Ingrid Pitt, but she's not bad in the role. It's just uh, quite different going from the brunette version of the character of Marcala Carmilla and all of a sudden having a blonde actress playing her um, in here. Now speaking of Marcala, in her opening scene where she is being resurrected, they have a shot of Count Karnstein's eyes. And it is obvious this is not Mike Raven. And this is a shot of Christopher Lee's bloodshot eyes from one of the Dracula films. But uh, her performance isn't too bad. I mean, it's it's pretty good. Uh, which is more than I can say for my next uh, actor that I'm going to mention here, and that's Ralph Bates playing uh, Giles in here. And he, normally, he is really good in films with uh, Hammer, but in this one, in fact, this one, this performance here, um made me think that uh, he was just a horrible actor um, because of his performance in this film. Um, which is why later on, whenever I'd see him in anything else, I was like, oh, no, not this guy again. And uh, then I saw in those films that, whoa, he, what happened here? So I don't know whether it was Jimmy Sangster's directing that, uh, you know, made him uh, behave so strangely in this character and play this character so off the wall and so stupid. Um, but yeah, it's not the best performance of uh, Ralph Bates. And later on after this film was made, he ended up making comments that um, this was the worst film of all time. Um... I don't agree with that, but you're entitled to your opinion, Ralph. Um, Barbara Jefford, as uh, the Countess, is uh, she's all right too. Um, the actress in this that really stands out is uh, Susanna Lee, playing Janet, and uh, unlike. Um, the Vampire Lovers were that weird way that um, Mercala slash Carmilla would um, get control of the people that she wanted to influence to get what she wanted. 
such as, you know, the, the brooch thing, um, in there and then, and then seducing, um, the Butler character in there. It, this one doesn't have that, thankfully. Um, most of her scenes where she's manipulating characters, she's doing it with, you know, the eye hypnosis kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, that, that works a lot better. Um, in fact, the best scene in this with, um, Ute Stensgard is where she attempts to hypnotize and turn Janet to her side. I really love this scene. It really is a great overall scene. Not only is the opening great where, you know, she's hypnotized her. But when she leads her into the room, it has that twist where she doesn't get her. Unlike um, in the Vampire Lovers. So, um, Janet ends up becoming more of a, uh, a hero than you were expecting in the film. Uh, Harvey Hall returns in this film. He played the butler, Renard, in the previous film. In this one, he's playing Inspector Heinrich. And uh, he's... I, I liked him in The Vampire Lovers. I did not like the way that they did his character, but I liked him. So um, it was good seeing him play another character and given a new chance um, at something, you know. Um, Peepa Steele, um, another return actor from um, Vampire Lovers, playing a completely different character of Susan Polly. Um, she, I mean, I didn't object to her performances in either one of these films. So she, she does pretty good in this. Um, but Jimmy Sangster is, you know, you can tell he's not as comfortable behind the camera as he is with the pen. Um, but I will say that I do prefer Lust for a Vampire over Vampire Lovers. And I know most people might think that that's a uh, blasphemy, you know. Um, but I just think the, yes, it still has the daylight crap where, you know, Mercola Carmilla walks around in the, in the daylight sometimes in, in the, in the thing which, you know, goes against all vampire mythologies. But, um, I like the fact that they went back to just the hypnotic eyes kind of vampire control thing instead of that stupid brooch bullshit and just being able to just, oh, seduce the person into helping them, you know. Um, this was much better done in that respect. So, my review of Lust for a Vampire. This one gets an 8.7 out of 10 for me. Um, this one, to me, is the best of the Karnstein trilogy. So, what do you guys think? Do you agree with my review? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. Which film in the Karnstein trilogy is your favorite? And as usual, if you've liked this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Because it really does help this channel out a lot. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. And uh, hope you will join me tomorrow for another 
action movie night. Hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.